Welcome back to Libby's Movie Hunt. I am your host for today. You're probably wondering at this juncture if Libby's ever coming back, but she is, I promise. It's just a very busy month for her. She's traveling a lot, so I'm just filling in one more time. We'll actually be back on Monday as well, so you can hear some reviews from her. And today we're going to talk about Black Panther, 1517 to Paris. We can also touch on some new movies that are coming out right here on Libby's Movie Hunt on Facebook Live. So, of course, uh, I, I don't want to do a show by myself, so I have uh, Mom sitting in again. Thanks <laughs> thanks for being here. I, um, sure, Kevin E. One good thing is we are getting used to doing it together. We are. Um, but, of course, we do we do miss Libby. We'll be happy to have her back on Monday, and then we're going to try much. to do another show on Monday, so you should be able to get... Hopefully a double dose of Libby next week, and then we can, you know, kind of, kind of catch up for the uh, from the month of February. So, yeah. Without wasting any more time, I don't know what I want to talk about first today. We have, uh, yeah, like I said, Black Panther in fifteen seventeen. We don't have clips or trailers. I'm still going to be using clips, but I'm a little nervous only because things are weird now with digital media. It's like we finally don't have anything to worry about with the Federal Communications Commission. However. Facebook and YouTube cracking down. I always think that everyone's stealing copyrighted material, which is not true because movie trailers on a movie review show is fair use. But um, you know, we're just trying to make sure we don't uh, don't anger the uh, the digital broadcast gods right. any further. So just treading lightly, but we'll still have those in there. Uh, just not for for this week. So um, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and get uh, the Clint Eastwood one out of the way. I don't know how many of you out there are really excited about this one. It's he didn't sell the trailers very well, and Jen. Generally, uh, critics don't get too excited about films that use the actual actors. Yeah. And you and I talked about this was it just last week. How yeah. I think I thought that that would be a, uh, a fatal mistake. Yeah. And um, I'll, I'll tell you if that you know I, I still adhere to that as soon as we're done with this review. But if you looked at Rotten Tomatoes, you might have an idea because it only holds a twenty-seven percent or something uh -huh. like that right now, yeah. which is uh, dramatically low. For a Clint Eastwood film. He just doesn't usually do that. He's box office gold 90% of the time. So why don't you go ahead and give us a uh, give us the rundown on that one. Yeah, I hate to I hate to think Clint is slipping, you know, but he is getting up there. Well, yeah, you I know. mean, but uh, he set the bar so high, you know, Clint over the years. I mean, when you think about his movies, but um, <laughs> I thought it was entertaining. Um, not great. Not. I don't know that I'm even gonna go with. Just tell us the, the, the real life story. The real life story is um, three guys, three buddies from childhood, and uh, they basically get on a train from Amsterdam to Paris. Mm -hmm. There is a terrorist attack. Two of the guys are military. They're American military guys, and the third guy's a buddy of theirs. And with the three, between the three of these two. Uh, th these three, they thwart this attack. They take down this terrorist before he's able to kill anybody. He gets a couple shots off, and one man is critically injured, but I believe he makes it. They didn't make that clear. Um, but And one of them is, is pretty badly injured in the process. But these three American kids on a, on a train uh, just happen to just see what was going on and spring into action and take their own lives you know, and, and put themselves in jeopardy, and uh, which was based on a true story. Based on a, a true story, and it's um, it's really kind of a cool. It's kind of a cool story, really, if you think about it. It's a very it. good it's story, very, very Americana. For those who remember, and, it might be thinking, how do you stretch that into a ninety-minute, two-hour film? Um, and I, I really admire Clint for you know. Uh, condoning the and supporting the patriotism that's that's wonderful well he loves the fiction nonfiction, the true story but this he one it does. seemed like yeah is he being innovative by taking the actors who were actually involved and in taking a step more towards that realism or is he or, or is it a, a lazy move or lay or a fatal error <laughs> yeah or a way that um he just didn't have the production put into this sure. that he does for normal films and said you know is it i guess what i'm asking is is it, is it a gimmick or is it something that's truly innovative? And uh, I got to no, say, it feels gimmicky. It's not too innovative, and um, you know, it, it's a lot of flashbacks. They'll they'll show right. a, they'll military show a little, flashbacks, a little and... shot of them, um, you know, leading up to the events on the train. Yeah, you know, present day. 
then go back to the kids in, in junior, mm -hmm. junior high and middle, or middle school. And they were kids that got in trouble and that, you know, their teachers would not have ever expected them to do something like this someday. So you just, it goes to show you never know. You need to, you need to nurture these kids, no matter how ill behaved they might be, they might turn out to be pretty good people. Right. And they do turn out to be great, great adults and great people. And they, they just, they jump back and forth. Then they go into where these kids are starting to go into the military and going into boot camp and, and working their way up. And, and it culminates with this, the event. Um, and it, it's, it's pretty scary stuff. I mean, these guys, well, they, I, uh, they jumped into the fray, and it, it was life-threatening. I don't quite uh, cho uh, agree. I don't <laughs> share your enthusiasm for um, the. I don't. I don't really find it. Think it was very entertaining. It, it kind of feels no. like it was. Um, yeah. When I was in in college, and we had to go watching you know, like the senior student projects. I'm not a saying they didn't do a good job, bit. but they had limited um, production value. You know, right. that's kind of what it feels like. It has that low budget sort of um, it does poor quality feel to it. But it would have been a really good senior project. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, it would have been great. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, but and I, they, the way they um, it gets a little boring when the the two three guys are, are traveling through Europe. They, they're out on leave and they decide they're gonna see as much of Europe as they can. And they're bouncing around Europe. And that's a little bit like a travel log. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just these kids. Like a road trip. They're almost. just road tourists, trip, yeah. yeah. And, and the dialogue's not too clever or funny or, you know, it's, it's, they're all nice guys and it's, it's okay. I know. think you would have been much better off just getting some uh, no name actors to play these some people that can really act that people don't know so you know if you throw like tom hardy in there or something obviously it becomes a completely different movie sure. it's a vehicle for a big star yeah but you could have told the story with people who could accurately represent it that aren't sure. the people who actually did it did it well the the main kid that really charged the guy that that took most of took all the injuries and he was the most gutsy one of the three um he actually wasn't too bad spencer stone he was pretty good um, the other two were okay. Actually, I wonder if the kids, and I needed to look into that before I ran in here to do the show, I wonder if the, the kids that played their parts in middle school, the roles of them in middle school, if they were real actors, because they were pretty good. Mm, yeah, I think they were actual so actors. So I think they might have been real actors, yeah. real trained kids. But, uh, you know, it's, it makes you feel good that there's, there are people like this in the world who are willing to do things like this. Well, other than that, and it's not not a long movie, ninety five minutes. That's not bad. I, I, I know. I, I think if you wanted to show patriotism for this event, make sure, you know, produce a documentary or something, because this, it, I don't think it yeah. really is. A, it's kind of um, a, not a very good nod. I, I don't think to the, to the story. Of, yeah, I know. When you think of like letters from Iwo Jima, you know, he, he's done better, and uh, maybe he was low budget and in a hurry, and you know. But I just wonder at his age. <laughs> I mean, he's in his eighties or is he nineties now? I'm not even sure. He's right. way up there. That's a good question. Um, but I wonder, Libby and I were just talking about this the other day because yeah. we already discussed this movie for this week. And um, I wonder how hands-on he really is anymore, how much he has people yeah. who kind of make some decisions for him because it's got to be difficult to still direct a movie at that age. I would, yeah, I would think so too. But, but then again, Sully this... came out last year and was a big hit, so you never well, know. that's true. That was just, what, a couple of years ago? Or was I that... think that was 2016, yeah. maybe? Yeah, but yeah, that's not too long ago. But I don't know that I'd... What would you rate it? Oh. <laughs> I hate to do it because I love Clint Eastwood. I hate to say half pop. Ooh, okay, see. But I, I might, just because it's such a, a great story to see about bravery. Well, Libby and I half agreed. It, we agreed a bag full of kernels. So if you're going <laughs> half popped, I guess we'll meet you in the middle with a with a half popped. But yeah, I, I give it a okay. bag full. And I haven't given a bag full of kernels in a while. So it's not oh. something I like to do, but no, this is this is a half pop. We'll, we'll go with a half. We'll pop. go with half pop. Good. I hate this. I'm surprised it's a bag yeah. full of kernels. Even in the running for a bag full of kernels. This is the me, man so. who did Million Dollar Baby yeah. and Unforgiven, and his first one, Play Misty for Me, mm -hmm. was great. About if a radio any, host. If anybody wants to, yeah, about a radio host and a stalker. Yep. <laughs> so, so yeah, strange weekend. Um, it's going to be at the box office with uh, Clint Eastwood film, the new Clint Eastwood film with a 27 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and then Marvel's Black Panther, a 97 percent on oh, Rotten Tomatoes. Did so, it really? Yeah, it did. Oh, you're going to talk about that now? And I'll talk about that one next. And this is one I was really not excited for because it's 
I enjoy superhero movies, and people are always shocked when I don't like these kind, like Wonder Woman or whatever. And I'm like, I like superhero movies, but I don't like every superhero. I, I don't right. really care about uh, sure. Ant Man. I mean, I, people hate. I don't really care about Deadpool. There's all these now. There's all yeah. these little ones that I just I don't care about if, if you're gonna throw a Batman or um, mm. a Spider-Man or an Iron Man or one of those or Hulk or Avengers yeah I'll go I'll go check it out but Black Panther I'm like okay he was he was cool as a minor character and uh, he first appeared in in Marvel Civil War which was a really good Marvel movie one of my one of my all-time really? favorites but he was very good as a minor character it's where you first see him he believes that um, his father was murdered by the Winter Soldier, who was Captain America's best friend, who turns evil. It's a whole thing. Turns out it wasn't. Um, and so this takes place pretty much right after the events of Captain, Captain America's Civil War. So after the murder of his father, uh, the Black Panther character he returns back home to the fictional nation in Africa, where he comes from. Oh, and, of course, there's people conflicting there, different sects, um, factions fighting over it. And then they're trying mm -hmm. not to have it lured into a big world war. So he's basically, you know, it's a diplomatic type role but still yeah. heavy on the action um really fast paced i was really really pleasantly surprised with this movie it, it, it's good acting very thoroughly entertaining a character that i'd kind of dismissed i ended up actually really liking i i, I was surprised that you could carry a full movie in the black panther but you actually yeah. can there are some parts uh in the middle i think they're kind of boring and this is a long one how long is it's it? It's about two hours and 15 minutes. Ooh. And if you feel like you've got to get up to go to the bathroom, don't try fighting it and waiting until the end. It's just going to ruin it. The just odds are ahead. you're not going to miss anything pivotal to the plot unless <laughs> you're into the third act. So if you have to do that, go ahead. I don't think you're going to miss anything. But if you're, if you're running out to go to a movie this weekend, it's something I think any age – could be entertained by it's pretty adult i you know when it comes for a superhero movie when it comes to kids and the the main character is kind of a combination of um almost like an iron man meets a wonder woman where he has lots of technology but also is trained by the tribal warriors to you know to, where he almost has is superhuman um so th that part is pretty cool and yeah it's good the supporting cast is good there are a lot of actors in this that i really didn't know about that that i enjoyed seeing um and yeah if you're running out this weekend and you're trying to decide between 15 17 or black panther just skip your patriotic <laughs> no dues and go have fun and see see black panther because everyone can enjoy it well i was kind of uh look i i when you called me and said i needed to see a movie real quick um you called me yesterday and i i said oh i'll go see black panther and you mm -hmm. said, no, I'm calling that one. <laughs> yeah, but I still didn't so want to see it that much. I, I even said, like, I'm going to see Black another. Panther, barf. Well, I wasn't going to make you go see Black Panther because you hadn't, you haven't seen any of the movies leading up to it, so it would have been completely no, new. No, and I, but... I guess I should probably try to do that. You know, are, are the Marvel comics, you know, there's two different comics. Mm -hmm. There's two different. There's Marvel and DC where you have your Wonder yeah. Woman, Superman, Batman, Aquaman, all those are on DC. And then the Marvel side is where you have all the good ones. You got the X-Men, oh. Iron Man, the Avengers, all that stuff. Really? Thor. Yeah. Okay. Spider-Man. Stan Lee, the guy who basically started Marvel Comics, vented all of these characters. And in my opinion, they're way cooler. Although people are saying now, oh, you're basing this off movies, not off comic, not off um the comics or whatever but if you mm. remember growing up that was the stuff that i was into like x-men and yeah um, you know yeah. so the marvel side has always been kind of my passion i loved you know wolverine and then right. the punisher that stuff was always my number one uh -huh. um so no I'm, I'm not basing on the films but the fact is the marvel movies are way better than any of the dc films the dc films are just not good i still have yet to see a good one i know everybody loved wonder woman I'm just not that into it. It's, I didn't think it was that great. So, yeah, yeah if you're going to go back and, and you want to watch some Marvel movies, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are streaming right now, go and just start with Iron Man 1 with Robert Downey Jr. Because I love I, Iron Man I really one. like that he is really good. He was really good. And, and I uh, like the dynamic between he and uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, all the Iron Mans are good. Yeah. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow is always a pretty small part, with the exception of the first two. Uh -huh. But, of course, she pops up, you know, in both of the Avengers and Iron Man 3. She's and, the love interest. Yes. And okay. at this point, I think... Rob Downey Jr. has appeared as Tony Stark in like eight films or something. I mean, no kidding. Yeah, some wow. of them just bit little cameos, but for the most part, I mean, he's still he's been playing this role for a very long time now. Yeah, you got to kind of wonder how much does he have left? When is Robert Downey Jr. going to be too old for Iron Man? I know, and for me, it's hard to think of him as old. You yeah, know? me too. I he looks him as a young kid, enough still to me. You know, and going through all the struggles he did, you know, but I, I think he kind of looks it. You know. Oh, I think he's aged. He's yeah, he's starting to age. But yeah. of course, they keep his goatee nice and bright, you know, colored and everything to keep him looking as young as possible. Yeah. But it's funny because in terms of superheroes, even if he was old, it wouldn't really matter because he's got like a bionic suit. So couldn't he always kind of be? 
going to be really old and still be able to do that with the help of the mechanics? Well, I don't that's know. true. Mechanics but still. And mechanics and makeup. I believe he's only signed on for one more of these movies, and it's the, uh, I think it's the final Avengers movie. So, you know, we'll see. But as far as Black Panther goes, it's good. Uh, some other characters will pop up who you'll recognize. Don't want to give anything away. Um, you know, check out after credits, all that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, very popcorn worthy. Go see it. Not Oscar worthy. No, 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 no. <laughs> I've yet to see a Marvel movie that I would say Oscar. Oh, you know what? Really? The closest I would say to an Oscar caliber Marvel movie would be uh, Logan, Hugh Jackman's last oh, outing as, uh, as, as Wolverine. Wolverine. Yeah, from the Old Man Logan comics. That one, that one's really good. Oh, that's fairly new. Yeah, and it's an R-rated Marvel film, so it's obviously a little more heavy than your no uh, your typical X-Men movie. So yeah, uh-huh. check that out. Uh, you were saying there's some good trailers. We only have a few minutes left. We're going to wrap I a little early today. So tell us, ra- tell us what you. Oh, I'm what thinking looks good. there are some. Finally, there are some good things coming out again. I'm excited. Well, they they're bringing back Lara Croft. Yes, they are. Um, with this um, Alicia Vikander, who I think is so cool, and I, I really like her looks. Did you Did you see any of the other Tomb Raiders? I did. I saw, um, oh, I think it was the first one. There's one with Daniel Craig and there's one with Gerard Butler. No, then it'd be the Daniel Craig. The first one. Yeah, that's the first, the first one. one. I saw the first one, which I thought was pretty good. But I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see how uh, this Alicia Vikander does it. And your old buddy that you love, Walton Goggins. Yeah, from The Shield looks, and uh, Justified. Yeah, it looks like he has a pretty big part in it. Yeah, he's got some good role. He's gone on to become a pretty big deal. Ever that guy, since the shield wrapped up. He works all the time. Yeah, he's in a lot of stuff. Oh, he's he's good. And then your other buddy. From Not a Breaking, conventional good looking movie it, star. So he's done a lot with what he's got. You know? Yeah. Well, that's like the um, Ple- is it Plemons, Jesse? Yeah, yeah. From yeah. Breaking Bad. Yeah. He's in everything. Yeah. He pops up in everything and he's in a really interesting looking thing called Game Night with um, mm-hmm. Rachel McAdams and, uh, and Jason with, Bateman. Jason Bateman, who I love. I, I will watch him in anything. I think he's terrific. I'd watch him reading the phone book. But um, Sicario 2, Kev. Oh, yeah, that's I right. I know you really liked Sicario yeah. 1. I, I'm sure. I'm really surprised. It doesn't seem like the type of movie they'd ever make a sequel to. I it's know like it. Making The Way of the Gun 2 or something I like that. It. It's just odd. But I know it. And um, Brolin's in it. Josh Brolin's in it this time. Oh, okay. That'll be good. Who I think is terrific. Hell, right? they made a good train spotting sequel. Like, 20 years later and it was pretty good so <laughs> yeah you know yeah and uh i think that and uh, i think that's gonna really be good sicario 2 the lara croft game night looks really interesting and i i hate to say it because it's probably really cliche death wish oh i think that looks awesome looks so good yeah and and that was made years ago you know by charles bronson and he made like six of them oh yeah yeah that was a huge franchise and that also speaking of breaking bad has a uh, dean norris is in that too yes yeah uh-huh yeah and that he, looks good mm-hmm. bruce willis i know he's getting old but he's still good he still looks cool he still looks oh i think cool. he's a perfect choice for death wish he is kind of like an older charles bronson now because charles bronson even when he was young he was kind of grizzled looking mm-hmm. you know he looked hardened and rough like he'd had a rough life even in magnificent seven yeah or even dirty dozen Oh, yeah, yeah. If so, I think he came out of the womb looking kind of yeah, hard. Bruce Willis is more <laughs> handsome, I would say, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say so, too. Yeah. Um, as far as the Lara Croft thing goes, everyone says, and I agree with this, that there's never been a good video game movie made. And the reason that is is because oh, video really? games always are, like, have really cool, serious plots that the game creators took seriously. They meant for the game player to have a, you know... a mature adult experience involved yeah. it's almost like reading a book now so whenever they make one of these comic book movies and they make them just really goofy because people think that's what a video game is it's like the people who don't know the game are going to hate it and the people who do know the game who had a cool interesting experience are going to hate it yeah. because it's something cheesy yeah uh, it looks like the new Lara croft though they actually may treat it seriously and they actually they treated uh, assassin's creed pretty seriously with michael fassbender and that was still awful was um, it awful? Really? Yeah, so it, it's just hard to find that balance of what's going to make a good uh, video game movie because no one's ever really done it. And they spend so much money on these things. Yeah. You know, I'm watching the trailer for Lara Croft, and I thought, God, how much money could go has to go into these things? And that one's not a lot of big stars, which I think is good. But the ones with big stars have also bombed, like Fassbender and Assassin's Fassbender. Creed. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal for Prince of Persia was a huge bomb. Yep. So you you got to be careful. I'm hoping maybe this will be the one that, that uh, breaks yeah. that trend, because mm-hmm. there are a lot of games that I'd love to see movie treatments of, like, I don't know, Metal Gear Solid or something like that could be really cool. Uh, so, we'll, you know, we'll see. I, 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 we'll probably see it. Yeah. You probably will. You, but, 
You and Li- you and or Libby will have to see it. <laughs> yes, definitely. And I like when someone sees it like Libby, who never played it, didn't care about the video games, because then you got both sides. Exactly. Same here. I didn't. I didn't even know it was a video game. Oh, yeah. Before the movie came out, so there you go. Um. All right. Well, I think. Uh, do you have anything else to talk about? Anything else going on? Anything out? Anything streaming you want to mention? <sighs> Nothing that I can come up with. Just keep watching the Olympics, guys. Yeah. Oh, my God. The Olympics have been driving me nuts because I have the TV on while I work during the day frequently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every time I turn it on, it's curling or... um, (laughs) Me too, in the day. In the daytime, more curling. Today, I was actually putting them through. I'm at home eating a sandwich, and I saw men's speed skating. I'm like, ooh, awesome. Turned it on. Curling. Curling. (laughs) I know. They save all the good stuff for prime time. They do. Yeah. But I feel like there's a lot of cool Olympic sports that I could be watching. There are. There are plenty. Curling just doesn't seem like that athletic (laughs) to me. I'm sorry. Maybe it is, but it seems like Olympic shuffleboard almost in a way I can't explain. I know. I'm not trying to take anything away from those uh, uh, Olympians, but, you know, it's not one that I get really. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, I love the snowboarding. I love the, of course, figure skating. It's the greatest, but uh, it's all fun. I love, yeah, snowboarding, downhill. downhill. Yeah, slalom. All that stuff is great. All right, well, bobsledding. Bob sledding's fun. Luge is fun. Your dad Bob sledded. Oh, yeah, that's right. (laughs) Very cool. All well, right. Well, thank yeah. you, Libby, for letting me sit in again. And thanks, Mom, for coming in. We will be back I on Monday. It. In case you forget, I'll make sure and uh, do a Facebook pu- Facebook push on that to remind okay. you. And then hopefully we'll be back on Friday as well. Just got a busy week next week. Libby and I are doing two presentations on the Oscars. We'll be giving you more info Can't on that wait. also. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'll be there. We'll see you on Monday. Great. Thank you.